My name is Brittany Menard and I am terminally ill. I moved to Oregon shortly after with my family from California because it is one of only five states that do authorize the patient a right to, to a choice with death with dignity. Do you believe in life after death? A lot of people do, and a lot of people also fear death and the uncertainty surrounding it. Well today, let's look at people who actually chose the afterlife, from people thinking that they're already dead when they're not, to others who let themselves slip away. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have the wedding. Sometimes ill people have the power to hold on or can choose to let go. That's what happened in this story. A mother named Jennifer was battling cancer and sadly wasn't doing too well. She was holding on and trying to stay strong and be there for her kids, especially since her youngest daughter was getting married on the weekend. So she attended the wedding and all was fine. The next day, Jennifer passed away. She held on to watch her daughter get married and after that she chose to let herself go and let her family live on without her. It's incredibly sad. In our nice spot we have Marique Vervoet. Marique was a Belgian Paralympic athlete who won gold and silver medals in 2012 at the London Paralympics in wheelchair racing and two more medals in Rio a couple of years ago. However, she she was in constant pain and suffering. At 14, she was diagnosed with an incurable degenerative disease that affected her muscles and spine. It caused her to become paralyzed in her legs and she was in constant pain. As a result, she decided to go when the time was right for her. She said that she couldn't continue on about her days in this much suffering. In fact, the pain was so bad that some nights she only slept for 10 minutes. On October 22nd, 2019, she passed away by euthanasia. I hope she's in a place free of pain and suffering now. In our eighth spot, we have the sick couple. In April of 2017, an elderly couple, Charlie and Francie Emmerich, decided that it was their time to go and wanted to go to the afterlife together. Both individuals were incredibly sick. Charlie suffered from prostate cancer and Parkinson's disease. Francie had suffered several heart attacks over the years and was just very weak. So on April 20th, with their eldest daughter and caretaker by their side, they both took a lethal dose of medication that they received from the state. Obviously, it was legal where they were from. They passed away holding on to each other's hands. In our seventh spot, we have the surgery. This next story comes from a woman whose mom had to undergo emergency surgery one night. The mom had been suffering from a number of health complications for the past couple of years and would routinely be in and out of the hospital. That night, she needed emergency surgery for her heart. Obviously, the woman's children were pleading with her to get the surgery done. It was expensive, but they said that they would cover it. She, however, was tired of the constant pain and causing her family so much pain. But she decided to get the surgery anyway. Just as she was put under anesthesia, she suffered from a heart attack and passed away. It seems as if she finally came to terms with the fact that it was her time to go and pass before the surgery even happened. Her kids were grief struck, but they knew it's what their mom wanted and that she is now pain free. Moving on to number six, we have Benjamin Keith Clark. Now, this story is a bit different than the ones on today's list, and you'll see why. Benjamin Keith Clark was a chef preparing food for a company that worked in the South Tower of the Twin Towers. As the plane hit the building on September 11, 2001, Benjamin didn't try to escape. Instead, he spent his last few minutes of his life guiding people down to safety. He saved hundreds of lives, including a number of people in wheelchairs who couldn't get down by themselves. Benjamin chose to sacrifice his life to save hundreds of others. He died a true hero. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Brittany Lauren Maynard. Brittany Lauren Maynard was an American activist that suffered from terminal cancer. When she was only 20, she was diagnosed with four glioblastoma and was told that she would only have six more months to live. Instead of getting treatment that probably wouldn't work, she decided to live her last couple of months to the fullest. A big part of this was choosing when she wanted to pass away. She wanted to take control of her cancer and not let it dictate her life. She said, and I quote, I've discussed with many experts how I would die from it, and it's terrible, terrible way to die. So being able to choose to go with dignity is less terrifying. So when she was ready to go, she took a fatal dose of medication prescribed by her doctor. This was when she said her suffering was too hard to handle. I hope that she's in a better place now. In our fourth spot today, we have Raymond. A man named Raymond from Belgium had a scary near-death experience. It started when he suffered from a heart attack. As a result, oxygen got cut off from his brain and he had this weird out-of-body sensation. He said, and I quote, I felt as if I were sucked out of my body at one point. I was going through a completely black tunnel very, very quickly, a speed you cannot express because you just don't experience it. Then a light appeared at the end of the tunnel. He said at that moment he realized he shouldn't resist. He came to terms that he was dying and just decided to 
surrender himself. He let himself go. For a minute, he was taken to the afterlife, but he ended up surviving. I mean, duh, or else how would we know what he went through? The paramedics were luckily able to save him. So although he chose the afterlife, the afterlife was not ready for him. Moving on to number three, we have Jack Phillips. Jack Phillips was a 25 year old who lost his life on the Titanic. He was the senior wireless operator for the Titanic. When the Titanic began sinking, he sent out a number of SOS calls. He continued to do this for hours on end. Eventually, the captain told them that they did their best and informed them to just abandon the ship. Instead of doing that though, Jack started helping others board the lifeboats and even threw out flotation devices to those in the water. He then returned to his post, sending more distress signals. He sadly lost his life doing so. But he's another hero that sacrificed his own life to help others. Coming in at number two, we have the coma patient. After getting in a bad motorcycle accident, 20 year old David was partially paralyzed and stuck in a coma. His parents were constantly by his side talking to him and trying to get him to respond. Nine months later, still nothing. Then on the anniversary of his accident, his parents came to see him. His dad held onto one of his hands, his mom held the other. They both started to talk to him. They said they would miss him, but if he needed to go, he could. Five minutes after telling him this, David flatlined. It seemed as if he was sticking around all those months just for his parents until they could come to terms with his death. When they did, he let go. And in our number one spot today, we have Cotard syndrome. Cotard syndrome, otherwise known as Cotard's delusion, is a condition in which an individual believes that they're dead or that they are currently dying or that they've just lost some of their organs. An example would be the case of this woman whose name was not shared due to privacy reasons. One day she was preparing food for dinner when she became paralyzed on one side of her body. She told her daughters to dress her in a shroud and to then place her in a coffin. Her daughters were like, no mom, we're not doing that. But then they finally gave in and she was placed in a coffin. Then they invited people to come by and mourn her death. And she wasn't actually dead. In this case, the woman literally thought that she was dead and was in the afterlife though. It's a pretty trippy way to end today's video. Um, and like I said, that's, that's all folks. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Isn't that scary? I think this is all pretty scary. Death scares me. Let me know in the comments below what your biggest fear is. I'm genuinely curious and if you comment, maybe I'll shout out your comment in my next comment shout out portion. Stay tuned. With that being said, why don't you guys smash that like button, obviously subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. <laughs>